Thanks very much. Uh, my name is Philip Bell, and I happen to be fortunate enough to own this modest gallery. And I'd like to welcome you all to this wonderful exhibition. Uh, I'm very pleased indeed by the fact that um, Hamish and Peter and Lizette have chosen to show their work here. I've seen the work outside of this context before, and I wasn't sure that it would fit in physically. Uh, but I think uh, the hangings have worked very well, and uh, all of the works are very easily observed and enjoyed, and I'm, I hope that you'll enjoy them all for the rest of the afternoon. Dr. Andrew Gilmore is a friend, and I guess one time colleague or current colleague of, of Peter's, and he's going to introduce the exhibition. Andrew's, by way of being, I believe, a keen collector of photography, and I presume also a practitioner of times. No? He's a collector and is very knowledgeable about the, the field. So, Andrew, if you'd like to introduce the, uh, the exhibition. Thank you. Um, I'll, I have to read a little bit, but I'm very honoured and a little intimidated to be asked to speak at the opening of a Campbell family exhibition. Uh, I find myself in this position due to my fortunate long association with my most significant surgical mentor, Peter Campbell. When I first worked directly with Peter in 1998, we were in that time when meaningful digital photography was just starting out, and our conversations revolved around, I've got more pixels than you. <laughs> Peter and my photographic paths have digressed, much like my interest in wine. I once imagined that one day I might be able to grow grapes and make great wine. Similarly, I imagine taking a great photograph. Alas, and thankfully for me, my path has not been to produce, but to appreciate these fine art forms, two fine art forms. I just love photographic art, modern art photography in particular, and I'm not talking about the lucky shot I'm talking about the planning, the effort, the intention and the provenance of making a great image by a modern photographic artist. And in this digital age, the photographer has a wonderful palette of binary information with which to construct their final result in a way no less complicated than a painter with his or her oil-based palette. And I might add that Lizette Campbell has layered into her exquisite felting work the same sort of details, but more about that later. As the grateful recipients of these beautiful images, we should not underestimate or undervalue the time and energy the photographic artist and the printmaker has put into bringing them to us. Today we have the pleasure of working, the pleasure of reviewing the work of two gifted photographic artists, one professional and one, I hesitate to say amateur, one young and one not so young, <laughs> one based in Japan and one based very near to here, one the son and the other the father. In March last year, together they travelled with their cameras to one of the remotest countries on earth, the Faroe Islands. Now I love a narrative in a photograph and indeed I insist on it and these photos tell a story of the most extreme long-term European habitation known. The Faroes are an archipelago of islands in the northern sea, about halfway between Norway and the Atlantic. What impressed on me the most about these images when I spent an hour with them yesterday was the geology. These grand massives that arise out of the ocean with what looks like layers of sedimentary rock parallel to the shoreline. In fact, they're six kilometres of volcanic rock in layers of one eruption upon another, sticking up to just 900 metres above the sea. Pyramids, 55 million years before man made theirs. It strikes me that these ancient stone islands simply tolerate the presence of Norsemen, or tolerated the presence of Norsemen and their animals over a thousand years ago when, when they fled a mad Norwegian king. The islands tolerate man like a dog might tolerate a flea. The forbearance of this basalt continues all of these years later. And looking at these images, we see roads scratched in the side of hills, 
and even through them from what I gather, we see a village, I think in this picture, that appears to have sidled out of the sea onto a flat bit of land hoping the hills won't notice. In another image we see a sheep shelter that one slope appears to have had second thoughts about crushing. I thought I'd just make some specific references to the three large-scale pieces. Firstly, Peter's uninhabited island with 200 sheep and 10,000 puffins. This is like a Josa step pyramid, pyramid jutting out of the ocean under an angry sky. At first glance, one might think it was a contrived wilderness, but no, it's real. Norseman has even built a tiny shelter on the side of the cliff and even thought that it was a perfectly good pasture for a mob of sheep. Incredible Norseman and, in, and an incredible image, Peter. The 50,000 or so Faroese people and their unique language and culture have succeeded in the modern age, which brings me to Hamish's masterpiece, The Salmon Farm. We've seen outside on the poster Hamish being held on a rope by his father so that he doesn't fall to his death while he collects the 12 images subsequently stitched together to bring us this triumph. The salmon farm, using 21st century techniques, produces protein for man's consumption, and this is the most efficient protein production on the planet. And this ultra-modern farming occurs between these ancient stones near the top of the world. I hesitate to, but must make mention of two giants of modern landscape photography who produce almost surreal images of man and his environment in a similar large scale. They're Edward Bertinsky and Andreas Gursky. Bertinsky is a Canadian producing large scale landscapes of mines, engineering projects, ship building, ship demolition, and his images are stunning. And Gursky, a German, differing scale but also highlighting geometric textures of lines and grids that man adds to his environment, such as roads, shelving in a shop, or the grids of a massive factory production line. Hamish, I think in your position, your image, you have found another wonderful combination of natural and man-made phenomena and have succeeded in producing this incredible vision, where frankly I expect alien ships to explode from the water in the next frame. I think it's sublime. Now, to the third large image, this is Peter's sheep gathering around the standing stone beneath the highest peak in the Faroe Islands at last light. So now I want to talk about sheep. The word Faroe is an ancient word for sheep, the sheep islands. These sheep were introduced into the islands well over a thousand years ago, along with breeds of domestic geese, of ducks, and this beautiful breed of pony we see in Hamish's image here. These are all unique to the Faroes. And here, once again, we see the ancient stone and man's animals permitted to be there. And I like the fact that there are 21st century ear tags on show. These sheep survive because of fat storage and their remarkable wool. Curiously, I realised when I was writing this that I once bred Scandinavian sheep in another life. Uh, this pharaoh wool has been used from for textiles from the start. Textiles are very important to the Faroese and each man has a traditional costume that is slowly created and embroidered to be worn on days of celebration. Felting is a very old textile technique and it's been part of this and it has been part of this Faroese culture. Wet felting is a method where which can produce felt from wool and other animal fibres. Lizette Campbell has in her work meticulously applied hundreds of layers of wool, including Faroese sheep wool, which is this one in particular, and other animal fibres in layers in much the same way a painter would with oils or, di or a digital photographer with pixels and binary information. Hot water is applied to the layers of hairs and then repeated agitation and compression causes the fibres to hook together into a single piece of fabric. With her pieces, Lizette has meticulously introduced colours to the felt to complement the images, whether it's the weathering and mossing on a whalebone, the azures of the sea, and the purple of the basalt caught in a certain kind of light. 
with the shawls, Lizette has incorporated the textures and colours of these marvellous Faroese sheep and the snow-brushed slopes of the hills at the same time. Some beading and other colours reflect man-made additions to the Faroes seen in other photographic images. The warmth of the Lizette's felting art complements and nurtures the images produced by the men whom I assume she has guided and continues to guide through life. So today I commend to you the work of the Campbell family. Hamish Campbell, whose work is shown today with the kind permission of the Art Site Gallery who represent Hamish here in Sydney. Peter Campbell, my dear friend and colleague, and Lizette Campbell, mother, wife and belting artist. Thank you.